Oh, little Sony. Oh, welcome back, my brother, my little buddy. Oh, you've been all over the world with me. And you're back in my pocket. So we're on the little Sony X3000 today. We'll do a couple comparisons. I brought the GoPro 9 along and the Huawei P40 Pro. How does this stand up? It was invented in 19... Oh, man. 2017, I think? This camera is the camera that changed my life. It, you'd think, like a photographer's like, oh, my first full-frame camera once I saw that first picture. Couldn't believe it that I started taking pictures and charging money, and here I am, flying over to New Mexico. I don't know what photographers do. I know what I do. I walk around. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So back in 2017, I really started ramping up my YouTube production. I started believing in myself and I'm like, you know what? I'm going all in on this. I spent all my time and I was releasing a video a day and then I got a green screen and I'm still releasing a video a day with all that extra editing and I was losing my mind. I turned my bedroom into a studio. Like I had three soft boxes, big standing desk. Like I hated it. It was like too much. Too much and so i'm researching little cameras i rarely ever made videos outside the odd one i would go to a festival or something get some footage and it's a pain in the butt separate audio and so this thing comes along and i'm like you know what it's so stable good audio is tiny why would i bring a canon g7x when this thing exists so i sold my canon g7x got one of these kidding yourself are you kidding yourself and my life changed completely because I didn't have to edit so much sometimes I could just do this and although we're on a quiet ass street nothing's happening we'll go to the busyness it was so much fun because things were happening all around I didn't have to edit all this green screen magic and put my head on wolves and shit I was like wow YouTube is fun again and so the videos I was making around my neighborhood at the time were pretty bullshit. Once I left for Thailand, this is all I would bring. Did you hear the wind? That was your one flaw. I put a little wind muff on it. Hopefully it's working. So calm down, Sony. Let us have audio. You lied with the mic jack in the background. It don't work. I said background, that doesn't make sense. I'll leave. Does this have the best image quality? Who cares? It didn't matter. It didn't matter then, it doesn't matter now. The fun is what matters and I always, like I traveled around Thailand with the Panasonic G85 and the Mitocon 25mm, 0.95, excellent purchase. And this, and always, I lean to this. If I was doing a visa run to another country, I just bring this. I leave the panty boy at home. Nobody's bringing a big rig like that. You're gonna travel across countries and shit on a plane going like, I got lost in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. So, so I can survive the trip. That's a gunshot. All right, we're crossing the street. You ever hear gunfire? Cross the street. Don't be on the same side as the gunfire. In the dark, my GPS went down. And I was like, oh my god, I don't even know the direction of my hotel. I just started walking. I didn't know if I was going to make it. And then eventually it kicked in and I got some advice from some guys like, look for this sign and you'll see it. I saw the sign and we made it. <laughs> but that was so fun. With just this little, the best videos I've made were just this thing. Content is king. I remember the first time in Thailand. I'm trying to cross this busy street and I couldn't believe it and there was no brakes and I was like, how am I going to do this? And I had this camera and I was like, oh god, that wind. <laughs> Watch the audio be unusable. And so I was like, this would be pretty funny if I filmed it in slow motion trying to dodge all these cars. Is that helping the wind? And so I did and it was fun. It became a theme on the channel. Everybody skips over it, but it was fun once and I try to relive it. And I do relive it in my heart. 
So I saw this thing on the Amazon warehouse for 225 Canadian. And I was like, you know what? Sign me up. Sign me up. I'm so disappointed with GoPro. The audio is always popping, although all you can hear is wind noise now. We'll compare it actually. Let's do that. The only problem with this warehouse deal was it came with a third party battery. Like some dickhead returned it, got his Sony camera or battery and then replaced it with his shit one. It's gonna last 14 seconds more. Oh, that's rude. That is rude. Who's doing it? Who does it better? Wow. We're talking 2017, that's a long time. It could have even been before that, I'm probably wrong. 2011, most likely. And now the GoPro 9 has had, I think, three versions. Because after I got this, then they finally came out with the GoPro 7, which finally caught up with Stabe. But before that, like, Sony crushed the 6, it wasn't even funny. And then the 7, you have some digital Stabe, it's kinda nice. Kind of nice, but the screen. What happened? Oh God, the screen turned off. I have it set to one minute screen saver mode. I'm a moron, but that confused me as hell. Confused me as hell? Do you like the double shot? I'm pointing the Sony X3000 that way and talking to you. Oh my God, how's the GoPro audio? It's good. <laughs> At least that has a wind protector thing around it. Better than this. Oh, who has the closer focusing distance? That ain't enough on that Sony. Uh, it helps. Who does have the closer focus? Because my Sony lost focus. That was its whole thing. And I do believe this one's back in focus. Right? That's the thing. Like, GoPro is no longer in focus. And they're unreliable. Popping audio freezes. This thing never froze. I vlogged in an ocean. Didn't freeze. That Sony audio, it's still better than the GoPro 9 probably. Is there nothing you can't do? It really isn't dynamic range probably. There's no sun out. Who's doing this? I've done this. It's an important shot. And it's less conspicuous. You have a little thing. People aren't 100% sure you're vlogging. Does he know I'm vlogging? Is she hinting towards me vlogging? Who's doing it? Who's winning the battle of the 14th century? Has a phone caught up to the X3000? I doubt it. The color science of the Huawei Miracle Team is something to behold. You never know when a black's gonna turn red. You don't know what's gonna happen. But I tell you, you can't fit that phone in your pocket. Why is it so big? Stupid phone. Who is more dynamic? How's the stabilization work? Who is closer focusing distance? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my god, Peter McKinnon? That might... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Now while I prefer the phone in almost every area, the one area it lacks is the size. I can put that in a pocket. You need to be on a tripod because you're a freak side-facing phone. You're a freak. I don't like it. So I have to have this rig, so it's cool if I'm out and then I have to plug in a lav mic, I'm tethered, it's bullshit. But the image quality is good enough and I get my 7,000 frames per second. Why am I holding my pinky out? Can people see that? Oh, everybody's looking. Versus the X3000. I find even old action cams outperform every phone when it comes to like a natural look in the color science arena. That doesn't mean that this X3000 is without its flaws. The biggest flaw, it doesn't come with a lens cap and it's this bulbous lens. It was so annoying every time if you put it in your pocket, things covered in dust, it's over. It's over for your whole show. And so like they sell little accessories. One is just a lens cap, but it's also glass. It's also bulbous glass. Like you can't, now you have to protect that thing. It makes no sense. And then they have another one that's square, and it's huge, and it's also just glass. Where's the protection? So like you have to buy their little finger grip thing, and then a little rubber cap. 
and then, but even that, the end touches the cap and ends up smearing it. I just always had to be wiping this lens. Pain in the bitch. Also, the menu is terrible. If you ever want to switch into slow-mo, it's a bunch of stuff. Menu, dive down, and like symbols that you have to memorize. Oh yeah, that was... <laughs> so it's not good at all. So it's like Sony could update this thing with their new technology, a little button press to switch into slow-mo. And where's my hyperlapse? You can't do that in here. It's very shaky. I've tried it. It ain't right. And the mic jack in the back is unusable. It's so hot and compressed. It, you can't. I've tried. There's a couple lav mics that are so low on their sensitivity that it's not peaking with every word you speak. So it's somewhat possible, but that kind of ruins the whole just vlogging on the street, getting every shot. If you're tethered, you have to bring a lav mic. Whereas this, I just wish it could isolate the voice a little better. It wasn't terrible. I used to hold it in here. It's all I cared about was good audio on the loud streets, but it looks really bad. Gotta be out there a little bit. Come on now. It's so funny though, Sony keeps releasing camera after camera, marketing towards vloggers and completely ignoring the best line they have for vlogging. It makes no sense. It irritates my blood. It boils in my veins. I don't get it. Like the RX O line, it's a 24 mil Tony 4. Like no Tony. And it's too tight. You're in here. This is your vlog. What is with Sony? Every single time they release a vlogging camera, there's some way they make it cropped in to unusable levels. I don't get it. I just want something wide and fun to show the world with. And this was it. You barely have to change a thing. I wouldn't mind a bigger sensor. You probably wouldn't have to increase the body size that big. Come on now. So this is 100% the camera they should be focused on for vlogging. Actual vlogging, like this is the easiest thing. Everything is auto everything. And that's how it should be for vlogging. You shouldn't care about settings and ND filters and twisting shit. I wouldn't mind a Black Pro Mist filter on there. Can we get one, Sony? <laughs> so give me a slightly bigger sensor. If you can fit a one inch in there, I'll be happy. But I would take the one over 1.7 of an inch or something closer to my phone sensor size. Something nicer. And then like a shotgun mic, make this thing a little shotgun mic with a wind muff that comes on, it sticks in, whatever. Boom. Menu switch to slow-mo, quick, which should be 480 frames per second. Thank you. Thank you very much. That wind thing's falling off. Oh boy. Oh boy, that was a cheap one. I cheaped out on that one, that's on me. So, I don't know, I might return it. I'm just pissed that the came with a third party battery. Who does that? That's bullshit. So, what do you think? Is it the greatest camera ever made? The answer is yes. Your comment will be deleted if there's any opposition. Am I gonna leave? Thanks for watching the video and buying this through my affiliate link. It's only $1,000 now. I don't know why it's so high. It's stupid. People stop making good cameras and then they charge more for them because they're rare. You're bullshit. I'm gonna leave. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you in the next one.